Hello folks and welcome back to our playthrough of Crusader Kings 2. In the last episode, our previous ruler perished thanks to the love of <laughs> old age. And we took over as King Roker of Denmark. Well, he was Petty King of Sjælland, but we were able to take over the land that our brother had. Our brother then died of pneumonia and we were able to form the kingdom of Denmark. So now we're a king, which will hopefully keep us keep this territory in line and we won't lose it. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we have a couple different notifications up here. We have a duchy of Scania that we can make as well as the duchy of Yiland. Now, Scania is part of Skane, it's part of all of this over here. Yiland is already somewhere that we have control over. We just actually have to create that title. Not looking to do it just yet though. Not necessarily anything too important for us yet, especially considering the cost. Now our other little alert that we have here is we have an opening for an advisor. Now the advisor is pretty much something that allows you to assign someone who, you know, if they like you, It'll pretty much vote your way, so. Now, if we look at Hawker here, he has a likely council position, which makes him a pragmatist. Oh, all of this sort of says what he would potentially go to. But I think a pragmatist would be useful to have. So, because I don't think there's any, no, there's no one here who's directly, like, really good one way or another as far as supporting us. So we'll take this guy as a pragmatist. Now, would he vote for more tribal organization? Looks like he would. Toast and Hawker are, so. But we'll give a little bit of time to allow the council to like us a little bit more. So who's currently helping us? Cody Toast and our other Cody. So 37 looks like that's probably about the minimum that we want. So let's work on our Chancellor next. We'll send him a gift. 15 gold will increase his opinion by 22. So we'll do that, send that over. Now we have a little alert here saying the world is a dangerous place and devious plots are everywhere. Rumors have reached you that people are conspiring to kill you. I must be careful. So now we have an option to go into hiding. It's not a good thing. I don't really want to go into hiding, but I may just have to do that. Let's see. I think we're going to have our spy master return and scheme to potentially find whatever plots are going on. Next. Well, I can probably change up to intrigue, which increases intrigue plus three and plot power plus five percent so that'll be pretty good to help defend us here now what else do we need to do to sort of protect ourselves oh we got our one war camp here let's see let's see well let's see if we can raise the tribal organization now we still only have two supporters so three of them aren't actually supporting us Hmm. I wonder if it's because, well, he has land, so that's probably why. Rafin has land. Icing does not have land, so why aren't you supporting us? Let's try to give you some honorary titles. Not court jester, because no one likes to be court jester. Let's start with law speaker. And for whatever reason, it's not letting me give him any more honorary titles. So, I suppose we'll have to give him a gift next. But we got a little notification about a technological advance. So we have a couple different things that we can do. We have military advances as well as economy. Now, there's not really too many economy advances that you can take advantage of as a tribal nation. Pretty much the main ones, I believe, are castle infrastructure and improved keeps. 
So let's go with, let's see, castle fortifications, city fortifications, reinforced hill fort, and stone hill fort. Those are the ones that help. So we'll do castle infrastructure, over on military advances. We'll hold off on doing any shipbuilding. For one, it's expensive, and second, we're going to automatically get the first level of shipbuilding in a few years once we enter the Viking Age. So you don't really want to spend it on shipbuilding. What we do have a lot of are light infantry. So if we raise light infantry, it boosts the attack and defense of both light infantry and archers. So we'll do that, and that's about all we can do. All right, we still have a lot of prestige. Now, one thing I want to be careful with is if we go into a war and we need some support, we can go to the Intrigue page and there's Raise Tribal Army. What this does is it raises an army of 2,500 men, which, as you can see, is more than double. Is Yeah, it's pretty much double what we currently are able to field. So that can pretty much win a subjugation war for us. So let's see. He has a lot of vassals here. Trying to get a sense of what the chances are of a war here with Sweden. I don't think it's very good. So maybe we'll just do our subjugation war of this whole area here. That way we can win it, take some more territory, and go from there. Now only two of our guys are likely to accept, but our military itself is pretty good. So we'll bring them together, and then we'll march north. Also, my general vassal limit is still pretty good. So with that, I really don't have to worry about necessarily having more duchies. Pretty much the reason that you make duchies is to spread out the number of vassals that you have. But if your overall vassal limit can take everyone, you really don't want to make more duchies and just end up potentially losing more territory. I mean, you won't necessarily lose the territory if you're a kingdom and you're just making duchies, but it still kind of spreads out your vassals a little bit. For good or bad. Though I think eventually your vassals dislike you. Let's see. This guy, for example, Odor, wants a seat on the council, is a title claimant, desires the Jarldom of Vestergotland. I suppose we probably could give it to him. Because whatever issues we had with him were when we were sort of, well, when we were our father is when we had the issues. So you know what? If we give him the Jarldom of Vestergotland, he has the territory for it. Sure. He likes us. He still wants to be a powerful vassal. He still wants to be on our council. What can he do? Not much, though. That's the problem. If he was better, I'd take him on in a heartbeat. Like, even as our steward. But look at his stewardship. You know, he's a bumbling idiot, pretty much. Is he actually a bumbling idiot? He's wounded. Arbitrary, diligent, cynical, stubborn, chase. Oh, that's lovely. Ooh, we've captured someone. Now, Aslog here, can we ransom her off? Yes. It's always a good way to make some extra gold is by ransoming, ransoming off people that you capture in battle. I hope these guys capturing Sailand don't potentially capture me. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. All right, I have a spy master opening now. I suppose I'll put Odor on it just because he's a powerful vassal. The only thing is, he sucks. So, 
I really can't do much with him. They're about to take all of Sealand here, but it won't do them any good. I almost have all of their territory. The war is mine. And he's actually offering me peace. So we surrender under these terms. Gain piety, prestige. Uh, Alpha loses piety and prestige. And we subjugate him. Accept. Now we did gain a little bit of threat from all of that. But it gave us more land. So always a good thing. I believe one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions if the proper leverage is obtained. How do you wish to proceed? Obligate, or we will do nothing. We'll obligate him. Or, well, we don't necessarily have to. He's not... I will obligate him, just to be sure. Thank you for reminding me of my duties and obligations. As your vassal, you are right, of course. For the foreseeable future, you have my promise not to support any factions conspiring against you. So that's always a good thing. Uh, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. We'll offer you the safe release of Queen Mother Ingrid of Denmark for the modest sum of 10 gold. Do we want our Queen Mother back? For 10 gold, she really doesn't give us anything now. She's too old. Nah. <laughs> Uh-oh, someone vanished without a trace. Who is this? Oh, this is our daughter. Oh, she's imprisoned. Oh, how horrible. Oh, our queen's imprisoned. <laughs> Through intrigue might take a long time. Requires ask to ransom for 10 gold. We'll do that. We at least want to take our, our queen back. I mean, we do have at least a son, but... Still, if we can... Well, she's kind of outside of wedding age. So, to do that, and to sort of increase our overall span, we are going to take a concubine. So, we'll go to Intrigue. Present Debutante. Let's see... Naive, just, slothful, craven. She doesn't have good skills, but she's at least someone, so we'll take her as our concubine. Now, Germanics can take, I believe, three concubines, so always a good way to have more children. The only bad thing is because we are gavel kind, it will kind of separate our overall control. But because we have a kingdom, hopefully our heir will be able to use the greater, sort of the greater locations to take control, I guess. All right, one thing I want to check. So that is part of that. So what's this part of then? Is that part of this whole mess? No. Is that part of Scania? Scania doesn't even exist. Hmm. I'm trying to tell exactly what this is part of. I guess overall it's just part of the Kingdom of Denmark? I guess. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out if Yelinsk, Lesvig, and all that will potentially go to someone else. Doesn't look like it, so long as I don't make the duchy, but you never know. Alright. So we have our Chancellor here. We're actually going to have him fabricate some claims for us. We're going to have him work on Regialif, whatever, over here. And hopefully we'll be able to gain control of that. Then we can move, attack, and 
sort of just continue along the coast up here. I kind of want to attack Saxony here and turn it into a tributary. You know what? We're going to do that. We can call allies. It looks like most of them will accept. We'll bring forth our military. All right. So what we're doing here is we are going to make a tributary. Pretty much what that is, is they'll give us money. And I believe we can also call them into war when we eventually go to war. So overall, this should be pretty nice. Now he is calling in some reinforcements. He called in this guy from Altmark. He doesn't have a lot of people with him though, so shouldn't be much of an issue. And hopefully our 2,000 strong army can pretty much take all of Saxony here. Especially because he's currently in a war with defending against High Chief Borwaj in uh, conquest of Whirl. So they're only trying to take Whirl there, I think. Looks like it. Definitely a bit of an army there. Well, let's go take it out. All right, a very nice little victory there. Let's take this army here as well. Pretty much we want to break the back of this army. calling a lot of people in, but none of these people seem to have a whole lot of troops to them. And when they show up, we just sort of take them out. Now, eventually, we're going to make our way over to where their capital is. If we take their capital, that should give us a nice boost of war score. Also, a good thing about this whole battle is it's giving us an opportunity to loot various places. Like this uh, little temple, for example, gives us eight loot. Always a nice thing. So as you can see, there's little icons that show what's going on. Probably doesn't help that I'm going so quickly. So I'll have to try and remember next time we do an army versus army battle to slow it down a little bit. And we have another alert to call in allies, but both of them will likely decline. Alright, gonna slow it down. So as you can see, there's little icons that show up saying what part of like the phase you're in. So I believe the little arrow icons show that you're in the skirmish phase. Now we're using pursuit tactics with like cavalry, even though we don't really have any cavalry, I don't believe. No, we don't. In the pursuit phase, one of the armies has routed and the other one is chasing them down with knights, light cavalry, horse archers, or those were the ones that actually pursue in this combat. So the pursuit phase, we don't really do anything good with because we don't have cavalry. But probably if we did have that, we could probably take out a lot of the forces that retreat. That's my overall estimation on how that works. Let's try and do another army battle. 
just to check out the text that's in the skirmish phase of this. All right. So in the skirmish phase, the armies stay at a distance. Archers, horse archers, and light cavalry excel in this phase. So thus, we do actually want to have more archers in our overall repertoire. So we can upgrade the practice range now for 400 prestige. And eventually we'll have more archers the next time we go to war. All right, we'll speed this up. We're pretty much taking out all of their armies that they send to take back their territory. All we have to do is actually just continue on and take the rest of the territory that's around here. My concubine Bjorg is pregnant. How exciting. We might just be able to birth communism before we end it here for today. Yeah, overall I think this playthrough is going rather well. We've definitely expanded our overall control of territory. And if we gain Saxony as a tributary, that should really help us out. Your acquaintance, Priestess Lamiki of Ravioli, or <laughs> Ravola, died. Uh, she was my daughter-in-law, so that's not exactly good. That means we have to find another heir for our son. And for whatever reason, heir to the kingdom of Denmark. Is he even still in our kingdom? You know what? I don't think he is. Oh, and he's homosexual. Lovely. How the hell did that happen? Well, he's arrived in our court now. So we can at least arrange a marriage for him. Oh. <laughs> so apparently the lady who was just with us was so bad that... Apparently she made him homosexual. <laughs> Alright. Let's go to age this time. See if we can find anything good. Again, it's never really a guarantee what you're going to get. Because even if you pick someone who has some good traits, it won't necessarily mean anything. Well, let's go with, I guess, the one who's 25. I guess she'll be alright. Oh, but it hurts our prestige so much. Anyone with any titles here? This one, but she's six. So it's going to be a while before she's... It's going to be ten years before she's ready to go. Grrr. This one's eleven. She at least has a title. I'll only lose... A hundred. I guess let's do it. In the meanwhile, I think I'm going to look for a concubine for our son. Present debutante. She's nothing special, but hopefully she'll at least work. Oh, hit the wrong button there. And offer concubine. Send. So he can at least have some children. Now how is our son doing anyways? He's sort of there. He has some intrigue, but beyond that, nothing special. Come on, war. 
you gotta come to a close pretty soon here because we're starting to gradually run out of money. Oh, I should probably move my steward there. Speed up uh, construction. And we have more technology. So, culture advances. Now here, um, I think probably the best bet under here is probably majesty for a tribal leader. Religious customs would help. Popular customs and noble customs wouldn't because it's for only feudal or city vassals. Tolerance, yeah, you don't really have to worry too much about tolerance. Unless you are trying to get, like, women rulers. But that's a lot of stuff to go through. Legalism can be pretty useful. Especially for title revocation. Um, do we want to maybe do that? We'll do the first level of legalism. If only so we can do title revocation. We have a son. Son was born to King Hroker and Bjorg, named Barad. Or... Communism! <laughs> so communism has been born. My court physician is worried about my newborn son. Communism is a feeble little thing, even compared to other infants. Total says he might not live to see his first birthday. <laughs> Total, you must attempt to save my communism. <laughs> this is very... <laughs> this is actually pretty funny, naming our, our son communism here. Okay. So, well, our son's feeble and sickly. Hopefully he'll survive, though. For the time being, though, what do we want to focus on him? Well, even though he's sickly, we're going to put him under pride. That should hopefully help him grow up to be a strong, you know, strong individual. While little communism still appears slightly weaker than other children his age, I swear he is much more energetic than he was a couple weeks ago. He might not be out of the woods yet, but the worst has passed. Hooray, he got a little bit of health. He's still sickly at negative 2.5, but he got a plus one. Alright, we took that one. Let's just continue taking territory around here. And once we have it, we'll be good. Who is that? Send Rolf? Oh, my son into hiding? Who's trying to kill my other son? Even though he's my gay son. <laughs> Technology, uh, intrigue, that's what I needed. Oh, I don't have any known plots, so I don't know why it wants me to send my first son into hiding for whatever reason. May wisdom ever elude you. This is a formal declaration of war. Our army shall meet on the field of battle. So that is the Swedish. They are coming to attack. Of course they're coming to attack, because why not? Just as it's looking like maybe we almost have this one more done. So now we're going to have to head north. And you know what? We're going to have to use that raised tribal army thing. It's going to be expensive, but we'll need it. And he's calling this guy into battle. He doesn't have much to offer, though. Oh, he's calling everyone into battle now. Okay, can I call any of my other allies into battle? Yes, call them into battle. And we wiped out that one army there. Let's 
Ooh. My commander was cornered and slain by the enemy on the battlefield. That's not good. This is a really big battle here. I mean, we're gonna win it, but still, really big battle. And we got another little alert, pretty much saying that someone is trying to kill us here as well. Ooh, between the 3,000 and that, yeah, let's go take that army out. My liege, my work in Rygath, uh, whatever, seems to have come to fruition by bribing, cajoling, and extorting. He's pretty much got a claim on the chiefdom. We can use it, but because we're in the middle of a war, we're not going to use it. Oh, shoot. Well, now we're, like, screwed. <laughs> we are really screwed. Really, really, really screwed. Oh, they might just completely take us out here. Yeah, they're wiping us out. Oh, that's not good. Come on, guys. Alright, I'm gonna merge that whole army together. Who do we have here? We have this guy leading. We have this guy leading. And we don't have anyone on the other flank, but we don't necessarily need anyone there. Oh geez, they're going through and they're assaulting our forces now. That's really not good. So my mother died a natural death. Good for her. Victory! Fall back. Fall back. They're not going to be able to fall back fast enough. Oh dear, we're gonna end up being uh, pretty much taken over by these guys. Uh, yeah, no spending any money there. Well, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> we'll find out what happens here after we're taken over. Hopefully, we'll at least have someone to continue the legacy. How the hell did they get such a massive army? I really want to know that. Uh, he has 3,000 event spawn troops, so that's probably part of it. I don't know if it's because of mercenaries as well. He may have... let's see. He's at negative 58, negative 63, so he brought in mercenaries, that's what he did. I mean... It'd be nice if his forces disbanded because he doesn't have enough money for them, but it doesn't look like it's actually doing that, unfortunately. And we're almost to the point of losing this war. So who did they hire anyways? I lost the trait paranoid, hooray! I still really want to know how the hell this guy is affording all of these troops at negative 62. 
Unless he had enough prestige. Well, he's down to negative prestige here. I don't know. Well, he's usurped the title of Kingdom of Denmark from us. The Swedish-Danish subjugation war has ended. King Roker of Denmark lost. Dear cousin, your low character is the subject of Greek plays. I accept your offer of peace. Cousin, he's related to us, and our domain is too big. Well, I guess we gotta give something up. At least the good news is we still have quite a bit of territory. And I guess technically, in a weird convoluted way, it did kind of expand our territory even by losing. Because as you can see, the Kingdom of Denmark now extends all the way through there. It's just that we're not the ruler of the King of Kingdom of Denmark anymore. We are just the Jarl of Sealand, yet again. Alright. So what do we want to give away? We could give away Bleckenge, maybe. Or we could give away something to our son. Grant land and title. Kingdom of Finn or Sealand. That's all we can really do for him. That sucks. Sucks, 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 sucks. Let's see. I think I have a military commander somewhere around here. Let's give him a landed title. So commander, let's see. This guy. Grant landed title, Bleckenge. Send. Okay. And with that, that is pretty much the end of our fun and excitement here. Uh, for today. Good news is we did expand the Kingdom of Denmark. The bad news is, well, <laughs> we had to be taken over for it to happen. So, let's see. So this is the Kingdom of Denmark now. Quite a big place. Let's look at nomination stuff. Because I think on our own we can nominate someone. Jarldom, Kingdom of Denmark. So we can actually nominate someone. And we can nominate our son, it looks like. We are nominating our son, yeah. So the good news is, even though we were taken over by our cousin, King Sigurd, it's still pretty much going to go... Oh, this is the Kingdom of Sweden. He has two kingdom titles. Okay. Oh, that's what that is. I see what's going on. I think? Kingdom of Denmark. Jarldom, 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 Jarldom. King of Denmark, but that guy is the heir to the Kingdom of Sweden. I'm confused. Because it said the Kingdom of Sweden, but when I looked at uh, this guy, it doesn't have anything about Sweden, it just has Kingdom of Denmark. So, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> oh well. So, folks, that's going to be it for this episode. Oh, wait a second. I should actually probably try and finish taking over these guys here. Let's go do that real quick. Oh, but I got rid of my one forces I had over there. Fudge. What's this? A point counselor? He wants me to be chancellor. Sure, how good am I? Eh, nine, it's alright for a chancellor. What's this? Request council support? CRS? Sure? How is the liege council? I'm acting as a glory hound right now. Oh, but I'm doing her a favor and she doesn't want to be good. Oh well. I have decided to institute the minimal tribal organization law. All that is needed is support of yourself and other vassals. Approve? How does minimum tribal organization do as far as the realm goes? Does it affect anything with us? Oh, it's back to minimum there. Kind of hurts as far as going towards something greater. 
Oh, maybe it did that to uh, hurt the power of the council. Maybe that's what it is. That could be. All right, let's finish up this little war here. All right. Oh, dear. We suddenly got very old. Oh, because we hit 50. You hit 50 and you die. <laughs> or you're pretty much as good as dead in this game. <laughs> Come on. Take this little settlement. We'll boost it up to four. At least the good news is our monthly balance is back to a bit of a normal state now. What is this now? Peasant revolt on King Just or for Just on King Sigurd. Well, I don't care about that. Go peasants, go. <laughs> I'm just trying to get this little tributary here. Especially because I think Saxony makes... Oh, they don't have any income. Okay, I thought they were going to have some income. We have another son. This this time from uh, Dolf Dorolfer and his concubine. So we'll name this one Alexander II for Omar. And we'll get to see who eventually takes over the, well, petty kingdom. Is it going to be Alexander or is it going to be uh, communism? Oh, that little peasant rebellion did not last long at all. And there are so many wars going on here that it's kind of hard to tell who's controlling what. I don't think I'm actually gaining control of this territory here, so let's move away. As I'm beating a rabid dog in the yard, the little cur, Rognifred, runs up and starts hitting me with a stick. She is of no relation, I'll show the foul child. And I gained 30 prestige. As I turned, the dog bit me in the ankle and Rognifred managed to get away, but has since been skulking around eyeing me with hatred. Curses. Darn that little girl. I'll get her and her little dog too. <laughs> so yeah, one thing you have to be aware of when you're playing through this is if you're fighting a, like a location that has multiple wars going on, I think the owner of who gets that province is based solely on whoever's there first. So in this instance, for example, I think we should get it because we're the main force that's here. I think anyways. It's kind of hard to tell based on the color pattern. Because some of it makes it look like it's our territory, and then some of it looks like it is someone else's territory. And there's like three different people fighting over Saxony right here. I don't suppose they'll take peace? No, of course not. I'm really tempted to do an assault, but I don't really want to lose the forces for it. Oh, 
Oh, wait a second. So it looks like the nomination for the Kingdom of Denmark changed up. Aww. And it's only the sons of Sigurd. Well, I don't know who I'd want to support. He's the one that has those titles. We'll support him, I guess. And I'm already... Oh, I'm not supporting him. Well, let's support him now. Okay. So at least our son likes us. Yeah, sometimes simple things like supporting someone's claim or like nominating them seems to help kind of boost up sort of their opinion of you. We have a daughter. Um, let's name her Helen. Not too concerned with her though. Generally with daughters I do something like etiquette. I can't stop thinking of all those prisoners in my dungeon. They are at my complete mercy. What a thrill it would be to hurt them. Who can I hurt? Yida. Guards oil up the rack. Nah, I'll resist my foul impulses. <laughs> hmm. Message about a point commander. Offer you the position of commander? No. Oh, did our... Oh, our previous liege died. Now would be a good time to try and declare war. To get peace. Or to get uh, independence. Your liege's council is discontent. We can join a faction. Well, let's join a faction. So to join a faction, you go to intrigues. Um... I think it's Intrigue. Or maybe it's Societies? Factions. There it goes. Factions in the Kingdom of Denmark. So we have Arnie for Denmark and we have an Independence faction. So we'll join this faction. It's currently at 1126. That boosts it to over 100% of what the Liege's men are. So that might actually sort of kick it into high gear and we might end up being able to uh, gaining our independence. We might anyways. And we almost have this. Okay, finally, we're at 100%. Enforce the demand to turn them into a tributary. Of course, now they're probably going to end up being conquered, but oh well. To Honorable King Roker II, blessings upon you and your house. We request that you honor your obligation and answer this call to arms against High Chief Mil So what are we doing? Brandenburgian Saxon Subjugation War. And the West Francian claim on Saxony War? I guess we'll join that. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, we're joining two different wars here. And of course, they're both ending badly. I should have just declined. I knew I should have just declined. <laughs> well, good news is our betrothed can marry. And because we're no longer over the kingdom, it didn't exactly give us a... didn't hurt our tribute or our uh, prestige. Not tribute. Tribute is this. Well, we're losing this war real quick against France and all that. What the hell is this about? We live in Armony. We would like you to back our plot to kill Rognifred, my rival. Sure! I told you I was going to get that little girl. And her dog, too. <laughs> Alright, folks. So I think this is definitely a good time to end it here. Went way over time, but I wanted to take uh, Saxony as a tribute. Unfortunately, it looks like they kind of ended up taking us all into war here, so we'll see what happens. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you stay notified on all of my streams and videos. 
and leave a like, it always helps the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get to it and hopefully be able to help you out. And don't forget if you are looking to name any of the potential heirs for this playthrough. Also leave a comment below and let me know of a name for a good heir here. Alright folks, thanks for watching and I will see you all later.